Capitol Reef National Park is one of the lesser visited national parks in Utah, located off the beaten path between Bryce and Arches. It's well worth seeking out though as it's a stunning area filled with hikes, history, and geological wonders. While my dad and I only spent one day here, we were able to see many of the park's best attractions and found a lot to love in this special part of Utah. Here's all the information on our trip to Capitol Reef National Park and be sure to let me know what I left off in the comments. It's a nice 26 degrees to start our morning. We're gonna grab some breakfast and then go explore Capitol Reef National Park. In the winter, the food options are limited, so we headed over to the Pioneer Kitchen and started with some trout and eggs. That was the only open breakfast in town, but surprisingly good. Heading in to the National Park. Made it into Capitol Reef National Park. From our breakfast spot, it was only about five minutes to enter the park and then another 10 minutes to get to the main sites. Chimney Rock was the first point of interest. There's a hiking trail close to the top, but we just took it in from the road. After passing Chimney Rock, our first stop was at Panorama Point. We're in for a cold day in Capitol Reef. Yeah. Woo! From there, there's a short one mile dirt road you can take to Goosenecks Overlook. It was easily passable with a two wheel drive car when we went. After you park, it's a five minute walk to the Overlook and it's a beautiful area to see the different bends in the river. Back in the car, it was a stunning drive to the park's interior and some of the historic sections. We passed the main turnoff which goes to the visitor center and the Gifford homestead in order to go towards a hike that we were doing and to see the old schoolhouse. The school here was used from when it was built in the late 1800s to 1941. This is one of the areas where you can harvest the fruit. Do you want to go grab grab something off the tree for us? Yeah, I'll go grab a stick. <laughs> This park has a dozen working orchards and during certain times of the year, you can actually pick the fruit that they grow here. We're at our next stop and supposedly there's some petroglyphs here. Pops is looking up at the petroglyphs. You can see them, they're right up there and they're pretty detailed, which is really cool. These petroglyphs have been dated to between 600 and 1300 AD. So there's some people right here, and then there's some deer over here. There used to be a lot more petroglyphs here pre-1950, but they were destroyed due to a rock fall. If you have a zoom lens or binoculars, this is a great stop in the park as they're well preserved and you can really see the petroglyphs. We're setting out on our first hike in Capitol Reef, going up to Hickman Bridge, which is one mile each way. We're right here, and we are heading up to the bridge. There's a way longer trail you can take, but we're just doing this short one. They have trail guides for 50 cents you can take here as well. Hickman Bridge is the most popular trail in the park as it leads to a beautiful arch. This trail is already beautiful. We are running along a creek, starting the uphill climb. This trail is around two miles round trip with about 400 feet of elevation gain to get to the arch. The trail begins flat as you follow the creek and then you start the uphill climb. Here's a little trail marker signs that refer to that little map you could get for 50 cents. As you head up, the trail's pretty amazing as there's some lava rock and there's great views across the way towards Pectel's Pyramid. We reached the split. We are heading to Hickman Bridge. My dad wants everyone to know he recommends a hiking pole for this trail as there's a good amount of uphill and downhill and it helped a lot on the knees. So cold, these little pools are still ice. This is a pretty cool little natural bridge. It's right along the trail. This bridge was about six and a half feet tall and had a circular opening in the middle. It's on the right side of the trail, so be sure to watch out for it as you head up. 
There's our first view of the bridge right there. We made it to a little loop trail. We're going counterclockwise to go see the bridge and then it'll bring us back here. Wow, that is a massive bridge. That's really cool. Hickman Bridge has a span of 133 feet and it's 125 feet high. So even though it doesn't look that big from far away, you'll notice how massive it is as you get close to it. Saying goodbye to the Hickman Arch, and we are heading on with our loop. The loop trail continues around to the south side and gives you some views back down into the canyon and over to the pyramid again. After that, it's heading back down to get to the trailhead. We made it back to the start of the trail, so now we're gonna head on to the visitor center, the old homestead, and then do the scenic drive. From the trailhead, it's about a five minute drive back to the Fruta Historic District with the visitor center and the scenic drive. The visitor center has all the things you'd expect, like magnets and stickers, but I definitely recommend picking up a self-guided driving tour. It cost a couple bucks when I went, but it helped a lot with understanding the scenic drive. Leaving the visitor center, you'll enter the historic area and start the scenic drive. Along the way, there are many different historic buildings you can stop at, with the first being the blacksmith shop. As much as I liked being here in the winter for the lack of people, it would be awesome to see the orchards in full bloom. This is the famous Gifford house where you get the pies that everyone raves about when you research Capitol Reef, but unfortunately, it is not open now. It doesn't open in the winter, so we don't get to try the pies. Which is weak. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> Just leave one out, like a little slice for us to have. This area doesn't open until Pie Day, March 14th. The Rangers said they sell 70,000 pies a year, and then often they sell out before lunchtime. Let me know in the comments if you get to have a pie and it's good. I feel like I didn't have a full experience here without trying a pie, but the homestead is pretty cool as you can see the old barn and there were some turkeys walking around. Leaving the Gifford house starts the eight mile scenic drive into the park. According to the scenic drive tour I got, this route follows the water pocket fold, which is a route that many different people groups have used for centuries. Eventually, it was developed into a wagon route in 1884. The route is beautiful with massive rock formations and mountains on either side of you. You'll definitely want to take your time as you make the drive back. This is the end of the paved section of the Scenic Drive Road. There's a little bit more, well there's a lot more dirt. Look at these old cars going through the gorge up ahead. That's crazy. When you reach Capitol Gorge, there's an additional two miles of road that you can take that's all dirt. It was passable with a two-wheel drive car when I went, and it was one of the highlights of the entire park for me. Until the 1960s, this road was the only route through this area, and you can imagine how dangerous it would be with the rockfall. I recorded this entire route on my 360 camera, and I'll link to it in the description if you want to be able to look around and see kind of what it's like to drive in here. This is the end of the scenic drive, dirt portion. If you do the scenic drive, definitely do this dirt portion. It's incredible with all the narrow walls and everything. And this is what the pioneers came through when they came out to this area. So definitely don't miss it. Plus it's accessible. You don't need a four wheel drive car to do it. There are also some hiking trails which leave from the Capitol Gorge area, but we didn't have time to do any of them on this trip. We made our way back down the scenic drive, soaking in the views to turn off at the Grand Wash for our next hike. This was another dirt road that was easily accessible with a two-wheel drive car. If you're taking a self-guided tour, there's a couple pullouts, one that looks at the old mines in the area and another that looks up at the arch you're gonna hike to. We're heading out on our last trail of the day in Capitol Reef, Cassidy Arch. It's freezing and cold though, so we'll see how far we get. 
So we're going up to Cassidy Arch, which is over here, and then Pops is gonna get the car, and I'm gonna hike all the way through the Grand Wash, and he's gonna come pick me up on the other side. Cassidy Arch and the Grand Wash are two of the other incredibly popular trails in the park. <laughs> the trail begins with a flat half mile walk through the gorge. Cassidy Arch, 1.5 miles, almost a thousand feet according to this sign. As you leave the gorge, the trail immediately goes up on steep switchbacks. We're heading up on the steep trail. A lot of wind, but beautiful views, and this first section is the steepest. The trail on the way up ended up being a lot more exposed than I thought it was gonna be, with decent drop-offs on the left side of you. Pops doesn't like the exposed sections, and this is a relatively exposed hike, so do know that if you don't like them either. So he's heading back down, and I'm continuing to cast the arch. This is what I mean by exposure. It's like a drop like that as you're walking along the trail. While it's not even remotely crazy considering some of the things we did on this road trip like Angel's Landing, if you don't like heights, it's probably not a great trail for you. Look how cool that canyon is with the road running right through it. There's the parking lot. You can see how far up we've come already. We're way up here. I really enjoyed this trail and the views as it gave you a great appreciation for the landscape of Capitol Reef. That first half mile is the super steep uphill portion. From there, it's basically just a gradual uphill, but it's still uphill the whole way. There's that area where we were hugging the side over the canyon. We've come all the way up here gone back there, continuing to go up. Whoa, first view of the arch. Wow, that is cool. Even though it looks like the arch is close, we still have to go around here, all the way over. It's like a half mile. There's cairns to mark the trail, but definitely bring an all trails map with you. As you get closer to the arch, the trail gets a little bit harder to follow. You know the general direction, but you kind of have to look for the rocks to know your way. As we come to the final cairn, there is the arch right there. Made it to cast the arch. This is one of those arches you can actually go walk out on as well. What's crazy about this arch is that it sits about 500 feet above the canyon below you, so it feels like you're up somewhere really high when you're walking out on it. Staying on the arch is actually not sketchy at all. It is gigantic up here. It's crazy being out on the arch as it's so big that it doesn't feel like you're standing on something like that. Be sure to give your camera to somebody before you walk on it so you can get your picture. Man, these views up here are crazy. This is a beautiful hike. And even without the arch, being able to see these types of views makes it well worth it. Leaving Cassidy Arch, gonna hike back down, hike all the way through the Grand Wash, meet up with Pops again, and then that'll be the end of our time in Capitol Reef before we head to Moab. Cassidy Arch Trail is something you cannot miss if you visit Capitol Reef. Back to Cassidy Arch, breaking off with the Grand Wash Trail. We found Pops again. He's heading to the car, I'm heading down the Grand Wash Trail. This trail is 2.5 miles each way. We were already about a half mile in when we started the Cassidy Arch Trail, so it's about two miles to get to the end. This trail is one of the most family friendly in the park as it's two miles each way, but it's completely flat the entire time. This trail is beautiful as you wind your way through sandstone cliffs that tower above you. 
This canyon's so cool. All sorts of massive cliffs, even some little wind caves. And every bend changes. As you continue forward, the canyon's really wide with lots of rock formations to look out for. Be sure you don't do this trail if there's any rain in the forecast as you wouldn't want to get caught in here in a flash flood. The canyon's getting a lot more narrow here. We're about a mile in. Once we pass the next few bends, we'll be in a section known as the Narrows, which is the most famous on this trail. What's crazy about this trail is just how quiet it's been. I only hear the sound of my footsteps, some birds, and the wind. I haven't even seen any other people the entire time I've been in here. This canyon reminds me of a much smaller scale version of the Narrows in Zion with no water. That canyon is far more impressive, but this is still a pretty cool one to see. Wow, check it out. That canyon is getting more and more narrow. At its most narrow section, it's about 15 feet wide. I don't know if this is officially the Narrows or not, but it's definitely the most narrow I've seen this canyon. It's pretty impressive. Once you pass the Narrows section, the canyon opens up a lot more and the sides get a lot shorter. That middle area is definitely the best part of the trail. This trail is super cool, but I'm ready for it to be over. It's freezing. <laughs> hey, look who we found on the trail. It's Pops. He's finishing the end of this hike with me. Since this is an out and back trail with two different parking areas, it's about 25 minutes to drive the car from one section to the other. Pops drove around there and then he hiked in to finish the trail with me. It's good that Pops showed up so that you guys can see how big some of these canyons are. We're saying goodbye to the big part of the Grand Wash and we're almost back to the parking area. This is definitely a cool hike, but I would say if you're picking hikes to do in the park, do either one of the arches before you do this one, because if you don't have a shuttle, you gotta walk two and a half miles in the sand through the canyon, two and a half miles back, and there's definitely cooler trails you can do in Capitol Reef. I see the parking lot, it's right there. Made it back, this is where we started, and we walked all the way through and out to here. That's it for our time in Capitol Reef National Park. Hopefully if you come, you get to try the pie. Also, we really like this park, so definitely check it out. Let me know what your favorite spot in this is in the comments, and we will see you on the next video.